tournament breakdown for stop number four on the FLW Tour this year, 2019. And what a great stop it was. It was on Grand Lake of the Cherokees and uh, in Oklahoma, a, a very fabled lake, uh, a fishery that I've always wanted to go to. It's, uh, it's known for its, its shallow power fishing. It's part of the Ozark. Um, uh, you know, a, a family of lakes. Uh, it's, it's not like, you know, the White River uh, lakes like Table Rock, Beaver Lake. It's a lot different. Much better uh, a shallow power fishing tactic uh, fishery, a little bit dirtier water, and it was just a great experience. I'm happy to report that I came back with a third place finish, my first top 10 in the FLW Tour, and, and really keeping up the momentum in my rookie season. And now, after this third place finish, I'm in second in Angler of the Year points. And we're also still leading Rookie of the Year. Uh, and uh, and so this was just some great, great momentum going into uh, the last three events. And this is exactly what I needed. And the crazy thing about Grand Lake was the fact that after practice, I only had five keeper bites and in two days of practice I didn't even get a single bite and uh, so that that was kind of scary it was it was one of those events that at the end of practice I'm like I hope I just catch a keeper <laughs> let alone uh, you know do extra well on the event you know get the get the hardware and the check um, and so it was it was an event that that was just uh, totally out of the blue, you know, the, 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 as far as, uh, you know, catching them as well as I did. Um, and uh, really, really, really cool. So the first day of practice, as you, as you saw on the, the practice breakdown, if you watch that, if not, go check that video out. Um, the, the first day of practice was the day that I actually had a, a, a good day of practice. I went out there, caught about thir 13 or 14 pounds um, pretty, pretty quick. And, uh, and figured out that, you know, there was fish shallow. There was fish, uh, you know, eating a square bill crankbaits and spinner baits. And so that was possible. But then it got cold. And that's why the, the shallow bite kind of uh, died for me. Not many fish moved up. I wasn't keyed in on a, a slower retrieve yet. Um, and, uh, and so really, really struggled. But then the first day of the tournament, it took one bite for me to figure out uh, what I was doing wrong during practice and uh, and I had focused on the areas where I had found them in practice. It was a series of bays and, and pockets um, on, in kind of the mid lake area had a moderately colored um, uh, water quality you know it was a little bit dirtier but but not quite chocolate milk yoohoo style uh, water but I caught that fish really really moving that bait slowly and that was that was all I needed to kind of focus in on that really shallow retrieve just slowly crawl it around those areas where those fish were spawning I was really focusing on on you know the areas behind docks and uh, areas where, where traditionally I would expect those fish to move up and spawn and just slowly crawl a spinnerbait and I didn't throw the the redfish uh, spinnerbait that much the diesel spin uh, I actually caught that one fish and then kind of put that down, picked up a white sling blade spinnerbait from Z-Man, which I had retrofitted with a uh, single number five gold Colorado blade and really just, and I also used a, a minnows trailer on that, a, a pearl one, and that's what I slow rolled for the rest of the event. Caught all but two of my fish uh, on, on a spinnerbait, that exact spinnerbait. And, uh, and so it was, it, it, that was the key bait, and that was the key turning point uh, for this event. It was, uh, it was really important that I found that, that retrieve speed and had confidence in just slowly crawling that spinnerbait just right above the bottom. And, uh, and so that was kind of the, the, the big key for, for my success in this event. And day one, went out there and uh, and once I figured out the retrieve that they wanted, you know, caught two fish fairly early, had a little bit of a lull, and then ended up really crushing them in the afternoon. Caught uh, caught my limit, and then ended up catching a giant, a true giant, which ended up being the uh, the big bass of the tournament. It was an eight 
compound, even largemouth that crushed the sling blades. It was incredible. Casting it right next to a, a piling um, on a dock, right where you would expect for those big fish to be spawning. Crawled it, it, it felt like I actually rolled over a carp. That's how big this fish was when it flashed and, uh, and set the hook, got that fish in the boat. And that was the turning point as far as knowing that I've got a shot at this event to do really, really well. Got that fish in the boat, ended the day with a 19 pound, 12 ounce limit. And, uh, and that, that was definitely a, a really big key for me uh, in this event was having that first, first day big bag. Um, because the next day, I, I ended up running through the same exact areas, which uh, uh, it turned out to be a mistake. Only got five keeper bites, lost two of them, so came in with, to the scales with three fish for nine pounds. But that was enough for, for fishing uh, day three. So I, I did make day three, dropped down to 14th place from third on the first day. And, uh, and uh, but that, that's okay because I went out there, I realized after day two that there wasn't enough fish that had moved up after the, the fish that I had caught in my, my starting areas. So I needed to find new water. But the good thing was that I had that retrieve down. I was throwing the sling blades, just crawling it around. And so I could just find similar areas. And I ended up going and finding some new pockets in kind of that mid lake area, a little bit closer to the ramp. It was a much windier day, much more, um, uh, you know, rough out there the z19 performed flawlessly but it was really really rough out there and so lots of wind um, and uh, and keyed in on on uh, marinas and docks again and that day went pretty well you know it, it started out uh, pretty good caught two real fast again and then it had a big lull and then in the afternoon i ended up catching the limit you know within the last hour very very quickly and calling in fact and so that was that was really really key because I caught 13 pounds uh, and some change made it into the final day got in at seventh place and then from there fishing in the top 10 this is what I was I've been waiting for I've made three top 30 cuts this season out of four events but really 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 wanted a top 10 you know if you look at, at uh, angler of the year winners in, in the past you have to at least make one top 10 to uh, to be able to, to win angler of the year so i really wanted one and uh and so this was my opportunity to really uh you know make some moves and so went into the final day really confident really ready to just wreck them and, and give it my all I, I figured that brian thrift was pretty much going to run away with this event and uh, i didn't even have a chance but I wanted to fish to win. So I went out there, searched out some new water, focused on areas that uh, a lot of people, I don't think, were focusing in on. Smaller pockets up the main river, you know, that maybe had one or two docks. You know, people just didn't want to spend the time to stop and fish one or two docks. They wanted to fish a longer line of docks. But I wanted to focus in on those, those smaller pockets and then again, the marinas. Um, so, uh, or those, those longer docks. And, uh, and so ended up finding a limit, uh, caught, caught two fish fairly early. And then again, once the water warmed up and it, it, because it was a lot calmer and that sun came out, that's when I was able to, to really just go to work in those short pockets and caught a limit really quick and capped it off with a six and a half pound largemouth um, that, uh, that was not only big bass of the day, but uh, really pumped my weight up to big bag of the day. And when I got to the scales, I figured that I had around 16 and a half pounds and then got up there and they ended up weighing 18 pounds, 12 ounces, easily the biggest bag of the final day. And I moved up uh, into uh, third place ultimately. I was holding on to the lead for a while there. Brian Thrift only came in with one fish and, uh, and ended up getting bumped down by, by a, a couple anglers. My hat's off to Jeremy Lawyer for, for uh, his win. It was an awesome, awesome win. He did a great job, and, uh, and I ultimately ended a pound and a half away from, from winning this event. So that essentially was the breakdown for Grand Lake. 
it was such an incredible experience. I mean, it really was. I know I'm capable of, of making top tens. I know I'm capable of making consistent checks, but to, to be able to do it with the kind of momentum that I've got going and, uh, and do it when I'm in contention for, for Angler of the Year um, is, is really important. And it's, it's really cool to see that, that um, I, I performed as well as I did under these tough conditions in a tournament I didn't even expect to get a, a keeper bite in. Um, so very, very important uh, event overall. So next one is gonna be on Lake Cherokee in Tennessee, only two and a half hours away from my house. I don't have a whole lot of experience out there. I have fished a BFL out there, missed a check by an ounce. So I've got some some experience out there, and, and so I'm ready to go fishing. I'm ready to uh, to really work hard, uh, be positive, and and really make a run at at uh, at uh, angler of the year. Obviously, nothing is is set in stone yet. I have to work really hard to be able to beat some of the, the these rookies um, that uh, that are in contention for rookie of the year. You know, they're they're so good, and I've got I've got a lot of them behind me that are that are trying to hunt me down. So I've got to do the work and uh, really perform well. And a lot of things have to go well for you to, to win Rookie of the Year, and a lot of things have to go really well for you to win Angler of the Year overall. So I don't think it's ever been done in, in FLW history where you win, somebody's won Rookie of the Year and Angler of the Year in the same year. I'm not sure, I'll have to, I'll have to check on that stat. But, uh, but overall, it's, uh, it's really exciting to be in the position that I'm at. So I'm driving home right now. I got the trophy right next to me. Already deposited the check. Um, really awesome that that uh, you know I've got a little bit of change in my bank account. We're closing on our first house tomorrow. I mean, this is an awesome week. I'm really just uh, you know blown away by it. And uh, and so uh, it's just we're living the dream, man. That's all I can say. So anybody out there that is is watching this that wants to make fishing their their uh, you know their living i highly recommend that you just put in the work pay your dues and and uh you know if you do that you're gonna have a season like i'm having right now you're gonna you're going to uh, uh everything's gonna come together and, and you're gonna be able to achieve everything you want uh, but you have to do the hard work first so believe in yourself do it and uh and can do it it's it's not like some something that that is only meant for certain people it can be meant for you too and so that after this event i want to convey to everybody so um, other than that thank you guys for watching all the the texts emails uh, messages on on instagram facebook and youtube unbelievable guys really humbled by by all the support and uh and so i really appreciate it and for those of you that that don't follow my social media please uh you know consider following me on facebook and instagram um sonar fishing on instagram of course miles sonar Berghoff on facebook and subscribe right here on youtube uh i'm gonna be getting home pretty soon here to tennessee tomorrow we're gonna move into our new house and then we've got cherokee right around the corner. So I'm gonna see you guys out in the water. Thanks for watching.